All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our second episode of the St. Louis Hustle podcast, coming to you live and direct from the St. Louis Credit Repair Institute studios here in St. Louis, Missouri. Make sure you go check out stlcreditfix.com for all of your credit restoration needs. I'm your boy, H. Cortez. That is my girl, Shelley. And then over here, we have a very, very special guest. We guys, we were talking about business coaching and the importance of having mentorship, someone who's been there, done that, walk 10, 20, 50, 100 steps ahead of you, can help you dodge potholes and all of that kind of stuff. So as we were thinking about who we could bring on to shed some light on that subject, uh, we couldn't think of any uh, other person than the great JP CEO. So do us real quick a favor, JP. Tell us who you are and what qualifies you as an international business coach. Well, thank you guys for the, the warm welcome. Uh, I'm JP CEO. I'm the owner of Unheard Media LLC, the founder of the Army of Entrepreneurs International, the founder of the International Podcast Alliance. I've been in business, it'll be 14 years in August. Uh, I've done everything under the sun from uh, just promoting bands and music to now uh, teaching on an international platform, everything from leadership to podcasting. So uh, I don't call myself an expert. Uh, I don't I don't believe anyone's an, anyone is an expert. Things change too much, uh, especially in the world of technology. However, I am uh, probably one of the hardest working people you'll ever come across. I, I just don't stop. So I tell people all the time, there are people who are uh, smarter, have more money, more popular, but there are very few people who can outwork me. So um, I go through, I don't know, three or four books a month just to keep my chops up. Uh, I look to the people who I do business with to keep my chops up. A lot of people look to me for answers. And if I don't have those answers, you know, I'm required to be able to at least point them in the right direction. So I, it's, it's a constant grind. The people who say, you know, when you love what you do, you, you never work another day in your life lies. I work, I work, but I love it. Right. I, I call, I call lies on that one. I don't know who's not working, but I'm working, but I love it. I love every second of it. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you for being here. Uh, I know Michelle has a couple questions for you, so we'll let her go ahead and kick things off. I, I will. Thank you so much, Cortez. <laughs> is it that I look anxious when I'm over here? Is it that I'm always like, oh, I um, so I do. So I was super excited, right? When I found out that JP was going to be a guest because OMG, right? I, I love business and and the whole business mentoring um, thing that you do, I think it's totally, uh, it's amazing. It, it's exciting. Um, uh, I was trapped. I like to say was. I was trapped in, in the corporate business world for so long. Um, and, and I have that in my tool bag. But I absolutely love the, the world of business um, for 60 you know, so what is it that you bring um, as a business mentor? What is it that you have to offer to clientele? Someone who wants to book you as a, as a business coach. What do you bring to the, to the table for someone? So I think the, the biggest thing that I'll bring is a, a, a plan of action that is meant just for you. Right. So a lot of people come to me and say, I went to your website and I didn't see your pricing. Uh, mm -hmm. And you won't. I am not McDonald's. You cannot come to JP and order a number three. Uh, I get uh, I get deep into your business, right? So there is no one who I uh, am associated with, whether they're a client or that I'm coaching. Like, I'm all up in your business. Like, I know everything, right? I dig deep and uh, I build the plan of action based on that. So I can't give you a cookie cutter 
plan or price because I need to know where you are business wise and mentally. And we'll come back to that mental part because it's so important. And then I just need to understand how your business operates. So I have lots of questions. If you have a brick and mortar, I'm coming to the business. I have pastors that are clients. I'm all up in their church service, you know, all up in their service, you know, just figuring out, you know, um, personalities. Then I need to know how you learn, right? Because yeah. if I'm giving you a bunch of visuals and you're not a visual learner, yeah. I'm I'm wasting your time, your money, and then I'm wasting my time, which Wait. is money. So uh, the thing that I bring that a lot of business coaches, I don't have cookie cutter programs. Not wow. one. I never have. Uh, my my business, I create very niche relationships, whether it's through coaching or you becoming a client. That is wonderful. What? Okay, so let, let me take a little bit of a turn here. There's there's such a joke that is waiting in that whole McDonald's thing that you just said. I'm trying to leave it alone, but I really just want to go with it. It's like, um, can I get a number three with a side of um, uh, relational intelligence mixed with um, uh, business savvy with a little bit of a... Uh, I won't just, but we'll leave it there. So, um... Uh, with the coaching, um, you just mentioned, okay, you do churches. I'm assuming you say you do things with people who are trying to start podcasts. When you were deciding, you know, when in relation to becoming a business coach, right? When you, I guess when you set forth to, to do this, was it um, just the love of like helping people start business? Like, what was it that, what was the grassroots for you starting your business? Like, what was it that planted the seed for you saying, Okay, I can help people do this because I'm pretty darn good at this. My, my dog on sale. Like, what what got you started? So I I'll, I'll give the short version, but the way I got started as far as consulting, uh, I was actually told that I was too smart to work for somebody else by my mentor. Uh, rest in peace, uh, Rick Shank. He was one of my mentors, but he is uh, the first person who ever said to me, "You're too smart to work for anybody else." Uh, so that planted the seed. Um, he taught me a lot. Um, and so throughout my business, I actually started out just doing like marketing and promotions for music artists and bands. And then as I got um, more comfortable and more confident in doing business and learning about contracts and learning about the, the side that became the coaching side kind of happened naturally. Uh, people were always asking questions. People were always surrounding me. So I'm like, wait a minute, I need to maximize that and, uh, you know, straighten it up a little bit, get it documented. And then I, I, when I tell you the biggest joy is when I see the light bulb go off. Right. When people really realize like, hey, I can do this or, hey, you know, I just I've been running a business, but I was missing something or I was missing some things. And when that light bulb goes off, it makes it all worth it. Awesome. Uh -huh. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, well, when we come back, we're going to find out from Miss JPC CEO, what are some of the steps that one could do? Because we know that a lot of people jump into entrepreneurship on a part time basis. Well, when their business starts to bubble a little bit, how can you help them determine when it's time to go full time? I know that is a scary leap uh, and take it from someone who has made that leap with no plan. Uh, you, you really want to have a plan and we're going to get JP's thoughts on that when we come back. So stick around. I have done two prior Young Jeb B Better Health Knowledge Challenges. I decided this time around I needed an extra push. A good thing to remember is 32 pounds is the weight of my three and a half year old son. And I am not carrying around a, a three and a half year old, basically. I'm a mother of four. I just want to want to see how healthy I can get so that I can be around for a while. It's pretty amazing whenever you're excited to get on the scales every morning and see what the numbers are instead of dreading it. When I went to convention last year, the day of the 5K, this lady, Merle, came across the finish line. It, she was visually impaired. She was blind. From this day forth, I said, I'm, I'm changing my lifestyle and I'm just going to be a whole new me. I was out of control. I really let myself go. And I thought, okay, who loses 12 pounds in a week? I'm like, this is such a joke. 
But it happened, and it happened again, and again, and again. Anybody can do this. If I can do it, you can do it. Leading up to today has been a whirlwind, but I feel amazing. Everybody makes you feel really awesome when you come here too, so it just kind of like heightens your excitement about everything. I feel so much better. If I could help just one person be able to do that for their life, then it'd be worth it all. I feel amazing. I can't believe how far I've came from last year to this year. I have kept my weight off within two to five pounds, which is a complete miracle. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs>All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the second ever episode of the St. Louis Hustle Podcast, coming to you live and direct from the St. Louis Credit Repair Institute studios here in St. Louis, Missouri. Remember, go to stlcreditfix.com for all of your credit restoration needs. Back with my girl, Michelle A. up there, and JP CEO is over here. Before we went on the break, uh, JP, we were talking about uh, those of us who may have been uh, started our entrepreneurial journey part time because we worked in a full time job to put food on the table and do what we got to do, but we got that entrepreneurial itch, so we got to explore that. But when is a good time to make that full time leap or what kind of exit strategy should one put together to prepare to do that leap as comfortable? and as stress-free as possible? Oh, that's a good one. That is an excellent question. So I would say the very first thing you do before you even start putting anything on paper is do that mental health check. Entrepreneurship is not for the faint of heart. Um, you have to be mentally prepared for all the no's. You have to be mentally prepared for uh, all of the things that will literally just fall out of the sky, all of those unexpected things. You have to be really confident in what you're setting out to do. The second thing that I would say is that you really need to be realistic about where you are financially. That's usually um, number number one and number two are usually the things that scare people the most. So you have to be realistic in where you are financially and then start to plan that way. So if you know that financially um, you're not really ready, start looking at ways that you can live a little leaner, right? And then you could put those dollars away. Uh, I live, I still live fairly lean because entrepreneurship is, it isn't as cut and dry as one would like to think. So uh, I would say, look at ways to start living lean and do that now while you still have that steady paycheck, while you still can stack that money, while you still can, um, you know, still live comfortably, but start taking things away, start taking things away that, that are unnecessary, start cutting back. If you are 10, 10 visits a week to Starbucks, you need to, you need to get that down to one or two, right? Um, if you're eating a lot of fast food, that there are tons, <laughs> there are tens of millions of thousands and billions of dollars spent at fast food restaurants because we're not taking that time to just go to the grocery store and prepare our meals. So um, make sure that mentally you are strong enough to understand that it is not going to look how it looks on television. It is not going to look how it looks on Facebook. It's not. <laughs> Right. Uh, the third thing is understanding what you need to actually operate your business um, and don't be afraid of humble beginnings. Right. So I'll tell this story. When I first started out, I was actually managing um, an R&B group. I burned the CDs on my laptop and wrote on them joints. Right. And sold them for five bucks. Well, guess what? We took that and we flipped it to where we could get, you know, that. 20 stack CD burner, then we got fancier with the sleeves. You know what I mean? So don't be afraid. Don't think you have to walk out with the grandest of everything. Just make sure your business is straight. So make sure you're mentally prepared. Um, whoever you celebrate is your most high, you gonna need them. <laughs> you will need them. So make sure you're praying, meditating, doing yoga, whatever it is that gets you centered. Uh, make sure that you understand where you really are fin financially, personally, and then make sure that you understand exactly what you need to get your business started. And again, um, humble beginnings. Don't go out and spend 
ten thousand dollars on equipment when you can do it for two hundred. Awesome, awesome. I, I love that mindset. Um, money and humble beginnings. That's that's a great strategy. I, I'm I'm telling you. Yes. I walked into my job when I was sick and tired on a Monday morning at nine o'clock. And by 9.30, I was back in my car on my way home. Uh, <laughs> it was a wrap. And I will tell oh, wow. you, the one thing that I did have, or well, there's actually two things. I did have the mental fortitude uh, for such a journey. But I also got a queen that when I tell you back, boy, if, I, if y'all can see the chills, just thinking about how my wife had my back. And was like, you mm -hmm. got this. There's nothing like having that partner that can make that makes you feel like you can take on the world and take over the world successfully. So I did have those two things, but money was nah. Humble beginnings, no. Nah, I'm in business. <laughs> I need to let everybody know. I need to. Yeah, yeah. I was all messed up, JP. I wish I'd have met you a few years ago. <laughs> Go ahead, <Michelle. laughs> No, I was just gonna say. Um, Cortez and I used to work together, and uh, when I tell you that was a shot heard around the world, it was like, Cortez, you did what? He did what? Man, <laughs> dude was, man, he was like, he was a legend. It was like, man, everybody was like, the child was him. Everybody was like, at the gig, like, man. Oh, man. man. That's going to be me one day. Man. You know, know you know, so you know something Cortez said that I I, I want to touch on slightly too is uh, he mentioned his wife. Yes, yeah. And having, let me tell you something, having that support, whether it is a wife, a husband, your significant other, your partner, your friendships, all of those things matter because yeah. you are going to get uh, told no more than you are yes. Um, you are going to run into people who undervalue you. You are going to run into situations where you know you can help someone and they're not receiving that help. So having those, those, the, the randoms, I, I believe it. in you. you know, all saying, I believe in you. I, I believe in your brand uh, takes you a long way. It takes you a long way. And uh, it, it, it is important. It is important. The people that, I say this, the top five people that you speak to on a regular basis, if they are not your biggest cheerleaders, get rid of them. Get rid of them. And when I say that, I'm not talking, don't go do nothing violent. Just <laughs> knock them down on the list a little bit. I want to be clear because I <laughs> JP told me to take them out the game. No, we, that's we not are, what I'm saying. We are filming and recording. Uh, so uh, I'm at Home Depot in line with a shovel. And uh, some plastic bags, <laughs> and uh, my no, my business mentor said, "I gotta get rid of some people." Right, right, oh, right. So you know, so, take that. Don't take them out the top five. Don't don't right. do nothing crazy, but just take them out the top five. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Mr. Right. Don't try and play you for what I can do. Okay, that's quite some advice, Coach. <laughs> so so you touched on, you touched on the mental health part. Uh, you know, what are some things that JP CEO does to stay mentally grounded? Uh, like you said, entrepreneurship is a roller coaster ride. You know, your ups and downs, your peaks and valleys, and, and, you know, things come out of nowhere and shake your whole world up, flip it upside down, and you need to find a center. Uh, how do you do that? Uh, so I have uh, my dad. He's 89 years old. He has dementia, but um, that's how I unload, right? <laughs> or it's either one of those days where I've had a crazy day. And he brings up something and it just completely changes my mood. Uh, I also, I, I have a great support system. I have, you know, from 
people I've known for 30 years to people I've known for 30 days who, if if you say anything about JP, I'm the best thing since sliced bread. And everyone needs that. Uh, and I'm going to tell you something. I, I hit my knees. I'm a praying fool. I am a praying fool. Um, I'm in an industry where it is not only male dominated, but it's usually white males. And, um, you know, I've always been uh one of those people where you know I'll, I'll i'll add a little i'll add a little chocolate to the scene but it's not always easy uh and i get fought tooth and nail so i'm uh i'm i'm praying in the morning i'm praying in the car i'm praying before meetings i'm praying while i'm in the meetings you know i'm i'm, I'm constantly praying so um and then i get my workout on nothing wrong with hitting the weights to to let that extra stress out all right, what else? What you got, Michelle? I, uh, I'm trying to recuperate over here uh, from that <laughs> last little segment. I had to get my life real quick. Um, whew, without going back in, because we're going to have to do some retake in a minute. Um, so I uh, I was, I was, I got it because I'm going to go back in. Ooh, um, I love to laugh, and that almost took me out. Um, hold it. Uh, so, when I was reading on your page and I saw a picture and I'm assuming it was you and your dad. Y'all were both in suits. Was that your dad? Yes. Okay. Absolutely love that post, right? And because um, it seems like you feel about your dad the way I feel about my mom. And I love the post because you said, um, I think one of the captions was, um, when you go out, um, he, he going to still try to pray. He going to still try to pay. Um, he going to sing you a song. Someone's gonna take uh, yeah. and I absolutely uh, yeah. absolutely love that post. Um the support system and, and the whole family, you know, mixed in. I mean, you talked about the importance of your support system. Um I just I just wanted to just just uh, capitalize on that. You you talked about your dad. I was like I said, I was trying to pull it together when we were talking about him, but um I, I just really admire you for um just keeping them close. You know, because uh, sometimes people get caught up in business and they aren't able to keep their their um, uh, loved ones as close when they get into their senior years. Um, because sometimes a business seems to take precedent. So kudos to you uh, for still being Thank able you. to wrap daddy up. You know what I'm saying, and, and keep him right here, uh, especially if yeah. he's in the middle state where he is. So just kudos to you. Uh, Thank uh, you. I don't know if I had a point for that, because. Uh, I don't even know if I had but a that, that. You know what? But that's important. And, and, and early on in, in entrepreneurship for me, uh, I didn't have the balance. I was so focused on making sure that I leveled and uh, I've laid the foundation for my brand that I missed a lot. I missed a lot of, with my families, my friends. I got dumped a couple of times throughout the process because all I did was work. And uh, here I lost my mom. It'll be four years this year. Um, that was a huge, huge turn, um, for me. And, uh, I was determined to have the balance, but, you know, on, I, again, I want to be clear, um, you have to make sure the people around you understand what your mission is and that you, for a while you will have to put your head in the sand. So it's important that the person that you're laying next to, or that you're sharing yourself with understand that, uh, when you're building a brand, it's important mm -hmm. that they're flexible with you. But the second level is when you're maintaining a brand is even more important because now you're fighting, you're fighting at a different level. So um, you have to make sure that, you know, you're having those transparent conversations and, you know, keeping the balance, man, because I tell you what, um, I have some incredibly long days and, Sometimes it's a, a niece or a nephew that hits me with a text. I got told uh, just yesterday by my niece that my spaghetti was Liddy. Made my whole day. Ah. I made spaghetti, shared it with my niece. You know what I mean? And it was a long day. It was a long, hard day. And she was just like, hey, TT, that spaghetti was Liddy. I was like, right on. And that made me, it made me laugh. So it just, the rest of the day didn't even matter at that point. So, you know, um, I'll tell you guys a funny story. So. I'm hold, hold that thought. Hold that I thought. Am busy. Hold oh, that thought. Ahead. So if you're gonna tell us a funny story, do it on the other side of the break. And of course, we're not going to let the founder of Unheard Media 
get out of here without talking about the importance of branding, building a brand, maintaining a brand. But we're going to hear that funny story first, and then we're going to let our close us out yeah. with the importance of building a brand and how to maintain that thing, man, because so many entrepreneurs are missing the mark on the importance of a brand because that's what's going to stand the test of time. So we'll get JP's thoughts on that when we come back. So don't touch that down. Kill, what's up, St. Louis? Let me ask you a serious question. If I saw $20 about to fall out of your pocket, you want me to tell you, right? Well, the fact of the matter is, I see three to $600 per month falling out of your paycheck every month. So guess what? This is me telling you. For those of you who do not know me, my name is H. Cortez, wealth strategist, author, and I'm on a mission to empower our community economically through financial education. So the last five years, I've been fortunate enough to be trained and coached by some multimillionaires. And you know what I learned? Is that there's only four things that we have to overcome if we ever plan to build generational wealth. You have to overcome taxes, you have to overcome debt, we have to overcome our credit woes, and we have to overcome our lack of asset accumulation. But if we stop the bleeding by overpaying taxes three to $600 per month, and that's not me saying that, that comes straight from the IRS. So if you wanna know if you're one of the 80 million people that's overpaying taxes, all I want you to do is go over to payraise.wealthcreationplaybook.com, watch a short video, answer seven questions, and you can find out if you're overpaying taxes, but more importantly, you'll find out what you can do to stop the bleeding. Payraise.wealthcreationplaybook.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the St. Louis Hustle podcast. I am your co-host, Cortez Hustle. That is Michelle A. And we're here with JP, CEO. Uh, and she was about to tell us a funny story before we went to break. So we're going to let her, uh, before we let her go, tell her funny story. And then she's going to give us a couple tips on the importance of branding and how to build and maintain a brand. And then I know she's got to run. So we appreciate you. Uh, I'm giving you my thank yous right now, but I, I want you to take the last four minutes or so and give us your funny story and close it out with a couple tips on building and maintaining a brand and why that's important for entrepreneurs. All right. So the funny story is, is I meal prep. I have to. I'm very busy. I have my dad. So uh, I'm in the kitchen and I'm actually on a conference call, but I'm cooking at the same time. Right. And he had been fairly quiet. And so he pops his head out of his room. He didn't even come completely out of the room. And he says just randomly, ah, you got it smelling good in here, Betty Crocker. So I'm on this conference call. So they're cracking up because he's randomly coming out, calling me Betty Crocker. I'm like, okay, thanks, Dad. I, I, I'm not sure how to take that, but, but thank you. Things like that. Like I'm knee deep into this conference call about, you know, trying to nail this contract. And he's... <laughs> So things like that keep you level. So, you know, if you have your parents, both your parents, um, you know, count it as a blessing. Hug them, kiss them, do everything you can while you can. Yeah. So oh, you guys wanted, yeah, so you, want, you guys wanted to talk a little bit about the importance of branding and marketing. Uh, were there specific questions or you just want me to give some pointers? Yeah, if you can just give us a couple of tips. Uh, first, define what a brand is. Why is it so important for entrepreneurs to get this at the very beginning uh, and go ahead and make efforts to build and then maintain that brand? So in my opinion, uh, a brand is not what you think it is. It's actually what the folks on the other side of your business think it is. So, um yeah. So because that's no, those are your potential customers, clients, partners, sponsors. So um, the brand is what the messaging is actually taken as from the end user, whether you're delivering a service or a product. So make sure you remember that people are I hear it all the time. Uh, the entrepreneur is saying what the brand is and that's great. But are you listening to the end user to really find out if your messaging is clear? Um, I'll segue into what is your messaging? Are you saying you're the best stylist? Are you saying you're the best coach? Or are you saying, you know, you're a niche person? What are you saying? Be clear on what you're saying. 
uh, the importance of that message. I, I couldn't, I couldn't put a dollar amount on it. I couldn't put anything on it. It is so important when I hear people, uh, entrepreneurs, small businesses say, you know, they don't have time for branding and marketing, or they don't have the money to do so, or, you know, they don't see it as a necessity. I give them, uh, three to five examples and I'll tell you Walmart, Apple, Microsoft, McDonald's, right? And you could you could throw in uh, Nissan. They never stop. They make millions and billions of dollars a year. Yet they are constantly pushing their brand, pushing pushing their messaging, push pushing marketing, pushing ways to promote and to get people to constantly buy their products. So if people who are making billions of dollars find the time and the money to do so how do we look not doing so and i know the big thing is always about budget i said it earlier humble beginnings if your budget is three hundred dollars a month you need to make sure that you're maximizing those three hundred dollars a month there are so many things you can do you know there's social media there's digital billboards you know there are networking events you know so many things that you could do for free or little money. Stop walking into rooms and not working that room. Stop only going into rooms that you're known. Uh, one of the biggest misconceptions I hear is people saying, I want to get to the point where when I, I, I walk into rooms, everyone knows who I am. Nah, I never want to be that. I never want to always walk into rooms where people know who I am. I want to constantly introduce myself because that's how you grow. And that's the that branding part of your messaging should include some level of growth. Got you. I, I love it. Well, uh, JP, it has been real and it has been real fun. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to come hang out with us on the St. Louis Hustle podcast. Um, uh, I don't know if Michelle had any final questions, but she don't get to talk no more for the rest of the episode. So uh, never mind if, if she did have something that ain't going down today. Uh, but no, we're going to let you get on out of here, but we appreciate you so much. And I know you wanted to give a special shout out before you go. So uh, yes, go yes, yes. So today, today is the birthday of the first love I ever had my mother Darlene Phillips, a.k.a. Diva Doll. Uh, happy birthday, Mom. I love you. I miss you. We all miss you, but I'm holding it down. I'm the, I'm the little sister that's the big sister, so I'm taking it. I'm taking it one day at a time, but you are missed. We love you so much. Awesome, awesome. Sorry for your loss. Uh, sounds like uh, she was dearly beloved, and uh, she's done a great job because you are yes. making a huge impact on a lot of lives and we appreciate everything that you're doing so we're going to cut to a quick break and when we come back we got our responses to our question of the day so keep it locked right here Ask how you can sponsor this show.